you probably know I haven't had much respect for our media. The group thing for a start drives me nuts. Today, I confess, I am proud, proud of my profession. Because what I saw at the National Press Club today, fantastic. The speaker, not fantastic, was China's ambassador to Australia. Now, Xiao Chen seems a nice man. He speaks well. We're told he's a fan of the novels of Jack London. And a lot of people have said, well, compared to the previous guy, he's a charmer. But in the end, Ambassador Chow is still a spokesman of the world's most dangerous dictatorship, spinning for that evil empire. And today he got totally exposed, which perhaps it should be no surprise when a flunky of a communist dictatorship tests his lines and his deceits on journalists who were raised to be free. It was riveting TV, and I do hope the tape of it is shown in schools as a lesson on the power of free speech. And I want to show you some of it today, and particularly the journalists who set it for Australia and its values. First, though, the ambassador gave his speech before the questions, declaring the Communist Party of China, they were good guys, just misunderstood by the Australian media, which should do better. Here's some of it before it all went cactus for the ambassador. The system of socialism with Chinese characteristics under the leadership of the Chinese Communist Party has achieved remarkable success. It fits China, it's good for China, and it has won the heartfelt support of 1.4 billion Chinese people. Whether certain country has chosen a good political system or not, it's for the people of that country to have the say. Now, really, what a hypocrite, right? I mean, China's dictatorship has actually never even allowed an election to see if its citizens really do want communism. It has never given its own people a say. But the ambassador ploughed on. China was peace-loving, even though its navy right now is virtually blockading the island democracy of Taiwan, even firing ballistic missiles over its capital city, rehearsing an invasion, obviously, to take it over. And sure, the ambassador said, well, you know, relations with Australia, they've been rocky lately. Yes, yes, yes. China's actually banned some of our exports to punish us. But China now saw a chance of good relations again, if only our government, of course, would reach out and our media would say nice things about China. Now, with the recent federal election, we have a new Australian government. Of course, this is the domestic affair of this country. It's the choice of the Australian people. But it did provide us with a possible opportunity to reset the relationship between our two countries. Media has a special role to play that here in this country, the media coverage on China are mostly not positive or to be straightforward, are mostly negative. Okay. So far, he sounded uh, almost reasonable. You know, there's no real differences between us. We can make some money together. Let's be friends. But then came the questions from the journalists and Michelle's deceits and his evasions. They just tumbled like skittles. The journalists held the feet of this salesman of a dictatorship to the fire and exposed the savagery behind his suave facade. First up, there was a question about the Australian journalist Chang Lei, who's been jailed for two years so far after criticising China's response to the pandemic. She's been kept from her children, accused of leaking national secrets, what a joke, with the Australian ambassador locked out of her court hearing. You mentioned the 50th anniversary of relations between Australia and China. To mark this, is it possible that China will make practical moves to improve the relationship, such as lifting trade restrictions on Australia and or releasing Australian citizen Chang Lei? Uh, as, I said, as I said in my, uh, in my, dress, in my, in my, in my speech, uh, I hear we have a good start ever since the, uh, the new Labour government uh, came into power. Oh, sorry, for the individual cases, uh, there are a couple of uh, Australian citizens uh, uh, in China. They are under custody uh, according to Chinese uh, rules and laws. 
and um, uh, their basic rights are well protected. Don't worry about that. Get his answer, uh, uh, um, well, uh, but don't you worry about that. Then he was asked about China today threatening that it would actually invade Taiwan if it needed to, to take back this island nation that it claims is just a province of the motherland. Suddenly, China didn't sound so peaceful at all. In the first place, um, I'd rather not use the word uh, invasion when we talk about uh, China and Taiwan. Uh, uh, Taiwan is different from um, any other uh, scenario or situation. Taiwan is not an independent state. It's not an independent state. Taiwan is a province of the People's Republic of China. We, cannot, we can never uh, rule out the, our option to use other means. So when necessary, when compelled, we are ready to use all necessary means. As to what does it mean by all necessary means, you can use your Im imagination. But there are 23 million people in Taiwan. Don't they get a say in what should happen to their future? The future of Taiwan will be decided by 1.4 billion Chinese people. There you heard it. The future of Taiwan, which is an independent state, will be decided not by the Taiwanese themselves, but the 1.4 billion people of mainland China. In fact, that's not even true. It's going to be determined by the Chinese dictatorship because no one else is going to have a say in this at all. The Chinese dictatorship and its army will make Taiwan part of China. That's it. The ambassador, sure, made that clear. And then what would happen? Well, this question was very good. Your colleague, the uh, Chinese ambassador to France, told French media recently that when China takes over Taiwan, it will re-educate its 23 million people. There might be a process for the people in Taiwan to have a correct understanding of China. Would that about be, their uh, along the lines of the camps that you have in Xinjiang? The education process in Xinjiang? Are we talking about a different topic? Well, that's a re-education process, isn't it? No, there's no... I, 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 I would uh, rather not use the uh, word re-education. No, we'd rather lie. I mean, look at him twist and turn how uncomfortable he is just being questioned, right? But we know what faces the Taiwanese if China takes over because we just need to look at what China is doing already in China. The one million Muslim Uyghurs is already put in concentration camps to teach them how to be loyal Chinese communists. And I like this question too, exposing China's hypocrisy and this new axis of evil, China and Russia. Given your focus on sovereignty and non-interventionism, how are we supposed to take that seriously from China given the failure to condemn Russia's invasion of Ukraine? There's no simple answer to a question of complexity. There is a simple answer. China is an ally of Russia and a total, total hypocrite. Power first, principle second. Honestly, I thought the way the journalists went for asking quite reasonable questions in a quite reasonable way, exposing this bloke and his evil regime was a huge kudos to the entire press group in Canberra. It said something about our society as well. I'm proud. And finally, journalist Chris Yulman from Channel 9 summed it all up, explaining to the ambassador why no one could treat him seriously, could treat him as an honest man, or believe that China was just another thing we shouldn't really worry about. You've occupied and militarised the South China Sea in contravention of international law. Recently, you threatened an Australian Air Force craft, uh, aircraft flying over those waters under, uh, under rights under international law. You've under international law. You've imprisoned our citizens without rights to national justice. You have launched thousands of attacks against private and public sector through cyber. Uh, you've interfered in our politics, our universities and our... Di <coughs> Our diaspora and the people that you call the 1.2 million overseas Chinese, many of them we would call Australian citizens who owe a right, a duty to Australia. So can you see why it might be that some Australians would think that when you talk about international law and positive policies, you do not do what you say? 
Well, uh, I mean, uh, is it a statement? You have no question. No, I may. There is a very famous definition of an ambassador. It's someone sent abroad to lie for his country. Well, today, our journalist made Ambassador Xiao earn his pay. His pay from the most dangerous dictatorship you have ever seen.